Ada ular, Pak. Uh, ada ular di sana. Oh. Di atas. Di atas, di atas. Uh, di atas pintu. Oh. So the um, snake he's saying is inside his house. It's on top of the door. So yeah, let's go and see what it is, yeah. Yeah, let's go. Sounds good. Oh, oh dude. We got a Goni Soma. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's new series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. This holiday season, we want to thank the conservationists around the world who dedicate their lives to saving reptiles. So that's why... Today, I'm headed to the Chili Wung Reptile Center to meet with a friend and fellow reptile conservationist, Nathan Rusley, to talk about what he's doing for reptiles in his community. It's, it's been a dream for me to build a proper you know, educational center with um, live animals and education material as well. So we've already started a small collection here, you know, for live animals and education things, and we uh, talk about several issues like pollution, snake bite, why reptiles are important, show people the venomous snakes and non-venomous snakes, you know, how to beware of them and um, how to respect them as well. Another part of Nathan's work in the community is making house calls to relocate reptiles. So, uh, we got a call house now. Oh, I think we gotta go pick up a snake. Close? I don't know what it is. Yeah, it's not too far away. Oh, probably. sweet. Yeah, let's go. So what are the most common things you're seeing on call-outs here? Usually it's a wolf snake or a cobra. So what do you think this might be? They told me it's on top of the door. Chances of a cobra, I mean, that high up the door? I don't think cobras, you know, will climb that high. What else are we thinking? Baby python, maybe? Yeah, probably a baby retic. We never know till we get there. So let's have a look. Right. Oh. So the um, snake he's saying is inside his house, it's on top of the door. So yeah, let's go and see what it is, yeah? Yeah, let's go. Sounds good. Oh, dude! We got a Goni Soma. <laughs> Also known as the red-tailed green rat snake. That's a cool snake, man. That is awesome. I've never seen one in the wild. I guess this kind of counts, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I, I seldom see them in the jungle. Most of the time I get them, it's in someone's house. Um, somewhere like this or on the tops of the roof. He's cranky already. That is awesome. So let's uh, get him down from there for these folks and put him back where he belongs. Hi, buddy. It's checkout time. So see this neck flare he's doing? That's a defensive display, and actually a lot of snakes do this. Boomslong in Africa do this. Uh, a, a lot of your tiger rat snakes in Central and South America do this. It's a common, awesome display. It's like a reverse cobra. This is a really neat snake. We're gonna take him out here. Actually, I just said him, and I'm mistaken. I believe she's gravid. Yeah. Look at that. You can see the eggs. You can see the eggs, yeah. So we're gonna be really gentle. Now that she's all bagged up, we'll get this mama to a nice, safe place for her to lay her eggs. That's pretty cool when you save a snake. Yeah. And a whole bunch more snakes all at <laughs> once. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Dude, that was awesome. She's got eggs in her. Let's let her go. Yeah. 
This is awesome. I'm really excited. This is my first time in a bamboo forest. I can see why they like this. Look at those thickets. That snake could get lost in there for days. So she's gravid, as I said earlier. That means she has eggs. So we want to give her the ideal habitat for not just her, but also her young. So let's let her go and get some readings. All right. This is the red-tailed green rat snake. Something I noticed in the house is this one's tail is actually gray, but that doesn't change the snake's name. Some individuals' tails are gray, some are red. It's kind of a strange common name. So these guys are a non-venomous rat snake. They're not rear fanged, they're constrictors, they're diurnal, and they're fairly common throughout Southeast Asia. They're pretty well known for their fiery temper. Some people captive breed them, but not nearly enough. You know what? She's expecting, so I don't want to stress her out anymore. Let's let her go. Bye-bye. Go find a good nesting spot. Be a good mother, have a good life. Now that's a good feeling. Snakes seem to do fine without UV and captivity in general, but we are starting to see some signs that it may actually be beneficial. So we got our UV reading here. All right, the substrate here, if you dig down, it's moisture, but on the top it's fairly dry. So I'd almost want to do a layered substrate, you know, where you have drier to moisture or even make a moisture part in the tank so they can regulate that humidity themselves. Another observation though for a tank setup, she went right for that bamboo. They love this leafy cover. So I do a lot of cover. And also, if you look around us, there is tons of stuff to climb on, just tons of it. So I would include a lot of climbing objects for these snakes. The bamboo is actually diffusing a lot of the UV. However, these snakes do bask, so we'll get a second reading in the sun. So let's go get the basking spot. As expected, both our UVB and our UVA are pretty high. I like to get it from a couple different angles, not knowing where the snake's gonna be sitting. So I would imagine these guys need Pretty good basking site. Awesome. Well, here you have it. Nathan? <laughs> Let's go.